Where are Elmer, Herman, Bert, Tom, and Charlie? The weak of will, the strong of arm, the clown, the boozer, the fighter. All, all are sleeping on the hill. One passed in a fever. One was burned in a mine. One was killed in a brawl. One died in jail. One fell from a bridge, toiling for children and wife. All, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. Where are Ella, Kate, Mag, Lizzie and Edith, the tender heart, the simple soul, the loud, the proud, the happy one? All, all are sleeping on the hill. One died in shameful childbirth, one of a thwarted love, one at the hands of a brute in a brothel, one of a broken pride in the search for heart's desire, one after life in faraway London and Paris was brought to her little space by Ella and Kate and Mag. All, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. Where are Uncle Isaac and Aunt Emily? An old Tarnikin Kane and Savinny Houghton. And Major Walker, who talked with venerable men of the revolution. All, all are sleeping on the hill. They brought them dead sons from the war, and daughters whom life had crushed, and their children fatherless, crying. All, all are sleeping, sleeping. Sleeping on the hill. Where is old Fiddler Jones, who played with life all his ninety years, braving the sleet with bared breast, drinking, rioting, thinking neither of wife nor kin, nor gold, nor love, nor heaven? Lo, he babbles of the fish fries of long ago, of the horse races of long ago at Clary's Grove of what Abe Lincoln said one time at Springfield. And all, all, all are sleeping, 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 sleeping on the hill. hill. I was Willie Metcalf. They called me Dr. Myers because they said I looked like him. And he was my father, according to Jack McGuire. I live in the livery stable, sleep side by side by Robert Bauman's bulldog. I crawl into a stall between the hooves of the wildest horses without getting kicked. So we know each other. April days, I tramp through the woods to get that feeling that I sometimes lost. Like I was not a separate thing from the earth. I used to lose myself as if in sleep, my eyes half open. Sometimes I talk to animals, even snakes and toads, anything that's got an eye to look into. I once saw a rock in the sun trying to turn into jelly. April days in this cemetery, dead people will gather around me and become still like a congregation in silent prayer. <laughs> I never knew if I was part of the earth with a flower growing in me, <laughs> if I walked. <laughs> now I know. I could have been as great as George Eliot, but for an untoward fate. For look at the photograph of me made by Pennewitt, chin resting in hand and deep-set eyes, gray too and far-searching. 
But there was the old, old problem. Should it be celibacy, matrimony, or unchastity? Then John Slack, the rich druggist, wooed me, luring me with the promise of leisure for my novel. And I married him, giving birth to eight children and had no time to write. It was all over for me anyway, when I ran the needle in my hand while washing the baby's thing and died from lockjaw, an ironical death. Hear me, ambitious soul. Sex is the curse of life. hoary head and haggard eye, but an old man with, with smooth skin and black hair. <laughs> uh, I had the face of a boy as long as I can remember, and for years a soul that was stiff and bent, and the world would saw me just as a jest, to be held familiarly when it chose, and loaded up as a man when it chose, being neither man nor boy. Uh, in truth, it was soul as well as body which never matured. <laughs> and I say to you that the much sought after prize of eternal youth is just arrested growth. <laughs> oh. oh. was a town drunkard. When I died, the priest denied me burial in holy ground. The witch redounded in my good fortune for the Protestants bought this lot and buried my body here, close to the grave of banker Nicholas and his wife Priscilla. Take note, ye prudent and pious souls of cross currents in life which bring honor, honor to death. <laughs> who have lived in shame. I was the milliner. Talked about, lied about, mother of Dora, whose strange disappearance was charged to her rearing. My eye, quick to beauty, saw much besides ribbons and buckles and feathers and leghorns and felts to set off a sweet face or dark hair or gold. One thing I will tell you and one thing I will ask. The stealers of husbands wear powders and trinkets and fashionable hats. Wives, wear them yourselves. Hats may cause divorces. They may also prevent them. Well then, if all the children born in Spoon River had been reared by the county somewhere on a farm and the fathers and mothers had been given their freedom to live and enjoy, change mates if they wished. Do you think that Spoon River would have been any the worse? I 
know that he told that I snared his soul with a snare which bled him to death. And all the men loved him, and most of the women pitied him. But suppose you are really a lady, and have delicate tastes, and loathe the smell of whiskey and onions, and the rhythm of Wordsworth's ode runs in your ears, while he goes about from morning till night repeating bits of that common thing, Oh, why should the spirit of mortal be proud? And then, suppose you are a woman well endowed, and the only man with whom the law and morality permit you to have the marital relation is the very man that fills you with disgust every time you think of it, while you think of it, every time you see him. That's why I drove him away from home to live with his dog in a dingy room back of his office. 